I want to begin this next problem by introducing you to the first um, new 3D surface we've had in a while. Remember, we first studied these some of these basic 3D graphs earlier in the in the in the course. So this one's not particularly fancy looking, but I think if you'll compare it to all previous notes, I have not used this uh, z equals function yet in any of our previous calculus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the concept of level curves to approach this particular example. So what if z equals 1? What if z equals 2? What if z equals 3 and z equals 4? Just to get an idea what this looks like. So if z equals 1, then we would have 1 equals the square root of x squared plus y squared which is the same as x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's a circle. So this graph using a level curve, x and y, would have a small circle of radius equals 1 if we let z equals 1. So that circle is really one unit above the xy plane. If z equals 2, 2 equals square root of x squared plus y squared. So you get x squared plus y squared equals 4. Well, that's a circle of radius 2. And you know what? That's going to be a circle of radius 3, and that's going to be a circle of radius 4. Now, my pictures need something to be desired, but it's probably worth noting that these circles are evenly dispersed. When we looked at another graph that had circle cross sections, the paraboloid, they were not evenly dispersed. So, I wonder what this looks like if we are actually to sketch it. So it, it, as it goes in the positive z direction, the circles are increasing in radius the same as the height z. Um, the little finishing connection I'm going to go back to is something from our days of algebra. There was a definition of the square root of x squared where we needed to have the answer be x, but we needed the values to be positive. And so this was its definition. So if x was a negative number, we need the square root of this value to still be positive. So there was a connection between this notation and this notation. Well, my students, this is sort of gonna extend into our third dimension. What we've made here is a cone. And this cone has a height and a radius that are equal. So if this is four units up, then this would be four units out. My picture may not be drawn to scale, but my geometry instructor always told me, you trust the labels, not the artwork, especially when I'm the one making the artwork. So now for the triple integration. Ready? Let's set up a triple integral for the volume of this 
solid created by the boundary of the cone and um, z equals 4, horizontal plane, the bottom of the cone. As we just discovered, the cross section at the top is a circle of radius 4. It has the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 squared or y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 minus x squared. The x-intercepts, negative 4 to positive 4, and the y-intercepts. This would be our two-dimensional region of integration, if this was back a few sections ago. So when we want to set up the volume of this cone, we're going to set up our dy dx to represent that circle and our z value to represent the third dimension from the cone to the top boundary of 4. And I never quite know how to direct students where to begin this little journey, but since we're given z boundaries from 0 uh, from the cone to the z equals 4, I think we might as well just start there. And then the circle we've now done a number of times. Uh, X goes from negative 4 to positive 4. And Y goes from the negative, the lower part of the circle, 16 minus X squared, to positive square root 16 minus X squared. And there you have it. There is our triple integral for volume of this solid region between the cone and the top boundary z equals 4. Okay, there's more. Remember, you have the power of the pause button. If you're truly taking notes, you would pause frequently because I tend to talk a little too fast. So let's take this and let's manipulate it. All right, so we have this triple integration for volume of our cone, and it's in what we call rectangular form, where we're using x, y, and z coordinates. I would like us to consider a set of a coordinate system from our past that was called cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates took x and y and converted them to r and theta, but z remained z. So when we look at this integration here, x and y will get converted to polar, our, our r and theta values, and any x and y we see here will get converted to polar, but z still remains z. So where it says z is 4, that still is z is 4. That's not going to change. So let's think of this like I titled it earlier, polar plus z, our double integral plus one more integration added to it. So if the double integral is polar, but we just add this third integration on, let's see what happens. So, we need theta, and we need r, and both of these are fairly straightforward. The theta is once around our circle completely, from 0 to 2 pi, and our values of r are from 0 to 4 all the way around this from 0 to 2 pi. Converting the x and y to a circle in polar 
That is going to be very nice. So my volume is going to become dz so theta and r and z. Theta is going to be 0 to 2 pi. And r is going to be 0 to 4. Um, circles and polar coordinates work very nicely together, just constants. z equals, we'll get there in just a second here. We had no function here, so there is nothing in this space. I just created too much space accidentally. But what used to be dy dx now needs to be converted to r times dr d theta. In the first integration, z is the variable, and that makes r a constant. So I'm going to put the r here. Maybe my space wasn't a mistake. The r could remain here because it doesn't impact the first integration where z is the variable, but I'm going to write the r here. And looks like I still have a more set of boundaries to go. Let's see if I can't fill in those blanks. All right. z equals square root of x squared plus y squared, which is the square root of r squared. Now, here's me ignoring my own wisdom about what to do with r, I have to make sure r is positive. But in our boundaries, r is never negative. It goes from 0 to 4. So I can write r here. And the upper limit of integration here is 4 because that's what z equaled before. There it is cylindrical coordinates, triple integration. Whew, I'm tired.